Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for a special Hour of Code video chat to celebrate Computer Science Education Week. With us today is Jess Lee, the CEO and co-founder of the community-powered social commerce website, Polybor. Jess is a computer science graduate from Stanford. Before co-founding Polybor, Jess was a product manager at Google, where she worked on Google Maps and launched features like My Maps and draggable driving directions. Please join me in welcoming Jess. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm really excited to be here. Uh, I love uh, computer science. I've learned a lot. Um, so I'm really happy to be working with code.org. And I'm so glad that people start caring about computer science um, at an earlier age. Because I didn't have to do it in high school. and really not in this school. Great. Well, we'll get started with questions. Our first question comes from Dr. Ann Wang Middle School in Lowell, Massachusetts. How did you get involved in Polyvor? Sure. So um, I was a product manager at Google. Um, I was super happy and excited to be working on Google And then uh, one day someone showed me Polyvor. Uh, it was a friend of mine. Uh, we shared an office. He showed it to me. And I just started using the product every night because I loved it so much. So Polyvore lets you mix and match clothing uh, into these outfits, into these collages that we call sets. And millions of people come to browse and shop those looks. And I started playing with it. And I just loved it because it was kind of this combination of art and technology. And I was just a really excited user. And so I wrote a note to the co-founders. I didn't know them at the time. But I just wrote a note with some product suggestions, some complaints, some feedback. And they wrote back and said, hey, why don't, why don't you come here? And instead of complaining, why don't you come and fix it yourself? Why don't you join us at Polyvore? And that's how I got involved. Um, I met them in real life, really liked them, and decided, hey, I, I think I want to do this. So I ended up at Polyvore, um, did a little bit of everything. We were very small at the time, about a company of five people. So I did everything from writing code to washing dishes to selling advertising, got to learn a lot of new cool things. And we've grown and grown since then, and we're about 120 people at the company now, and I became CEO about three years ago. But it's been a pretty uh, exciting and kind of unusual journey. But that's how I got involved. So I would say it kind of taught me to be proactive about, you know, when you have feedback on something or you're interested in something, just go for it because you never know what will happen. Like I, 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 when I wrote to them, I really wasn't expecting to get a job. I was just really excited about the product and what it did, and it sort of changed my life to to join the company. So definitely be proactive. <laughs> Thank you, Jess. Our next question is from Kenosha School of Technology Enhanced Curriculum in, in Kenosha, Wisconsin. So what was the greatest obstacle you faced on your path to becoming a CEO? How did you overcome it? Yeah, so um, the biggest obstacle I had to overcome was being kind of quiet and kind of introverted. So in middle school and high school, I was definitely pretty shy and quiet. Um, I didn't, and I, I guess I kind of grew up with this impression that if you're an introvert or if you're kind of quiet, you can't be a leader. Um, and it turns out that that's not true. So I think I definitely, uh, I've learned that over the last few years that you can be a great leader, leader even if you're an introvert, um, as long as you can get people to, to follow you, you have good ideas, um, you know how to get stuff done. Um, another obstacle is I really hate public speaking. Uh, and I have had to do a lot of it over the course of the years. And it's one of those things where even if you're super nervous in the beginning, you just get better and better at it. Um, in middle school, I had, no, in high school, I had to read um, announcements out loud to the whole, like, my whole school as part of, like, my job as the, on student council. And I would shake because I'd be so scared <laughs> of doing it. And now I have to regularly give speeches in front of hundreds of people. So it's just one of those things you just practice and get better at. So um, that's probably the 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 greatest obstacle, being quiet and being not liking public speaking. Just take thought practice. All right, next question is from Reedsville Middle School in Reedsville, North Carolina. What do you look for when hiring a new person for your company? Um, several, a lot of different things, but one of them is um, 
we look for someone who has this innate drive to kind of make an impact, who wants to do more. You're the kind of person who volunteers to do a little bit more rather than just kind of skating by on the bare minimum. Uh, we also care about, we also look for people who are nice. Work sucks if you're working with jerks. You don't, there's no point. So um, we, we want to make sure that you get to come to work and hang out with people that you actually really like to be around who are um, trying to do the right thing. And we also look for people who are detail oriented because a lot of the, the product that we build has a lot of little details and we want to make sure we get them right. So those are some of the things that we care about. Oh, this is Dennis J. O'Connell High School in Arlington, Virginia. Um, so what inspired you to create a fashion website based on social interactions with people from around the world as opposed to just promoting trends from renowned designers? So I mean I didn't come up with the original idea for Polyvore, but um, the the reason I was so drawn to it is because it all the style on Polyvore comes from this community of people all over the world. I definitely felt like when I was growing up, there was sort of this ideal of beauty and fashion that was um, upheld as like, this is what you're supposed to look like. I definitely felt that in high school and middle school, that I didn't look like that. And it kind of felt, it made me feel kind of bad about my style. And so as I got older, only then did I realize that those images that you see in the magazines, a lot of them are incredibly airbrushed, and uh, the camera adds like I don't know 20 pounds. And it just it, once I saw my the first time I ever saw um, a real life runway model in real life, I was like, oh my gosh, she wow, that's what I was wanting to look like. like that that would never be possible, and I, it just seems kind of a shame that uh, that's sort of the image of beauty that's upheld. So. The idea of democratizing style and making it so anybody could say, no, this is how, this is beautiful, this is what I think style should look like. And being able to share that um, and get followers, and you don't have to live in New York or Paris or Milan to be a trendsetter, you just need to have a great perspective on style and be able to build an audience. That idea just really, really sort of appealed to me, the idea of democratizing style. Great. Coolidge Middle School from Reading, Massachusetts. How long did the creation and marketing of Polyboy take, and at what point did you consider your site successful? Yeah. Well, the funny thing is I've never really felt like we've been truly successful. We keep hitting milestones, and we keep getting bigger and bigger, but then the world's always changing underneath us. So, you know, the, uh, we have a great website, but what about, oh, now we need to be on mobile apps and mobile phones. And so the, the bar is constantly getting higher as we get um, bigger and bigger, and the, the and we're always constantly creating, right? Because you can never stop. Like, all the best products are always adding new features or improvements or changes as the world changes. So um, we'll never really be done. It's constantly ongoing. And it, that's kind of what makes it fun. Like, it, I think it's, it would be boring if we felt like, oh, we're done now. We're super successful. Let's just chill and do nothing. Um, so, you know, it's going to keep going for a while, I would say. Now we're going to hear from Fairfield High School and How has being a woman in a male-dominated field, dominated field affected you positively and negatively? Mm -hmm. So I'll start with positively. I think um, in tech there aren't as many women, um, but one of the unique things I bring to the table is an innate understanding of what female users want. I personally you know, care about style, I like shopping, I like home decor, and those are the things that Polyvore's user community cares about. And I just have a stronger connection to that because I am that user. Um, that's an advantage over, I think, other people who might not, uh, like a guy who might not be able to understand, like, deeply, really, like, because they're not a user themselves. However, I have seen plenty of, I have met tons of men who are really good at getting in the heads of, you know, user, female users, and I've also met women who are not good at getting in the heads of women, female users too. So it's, you know, there's all sorts. But I think that's one of the unique things that's an advantage. There's fewer people who deeply understand um, the audience that we're trying to, to um, build a product for. Uh, maybe one of the negatives is that the people who control uh, the money, the investors who give you money and say, here's money, you know, here's your loan basically, or here's some money to go build your company, um, that 
uh, that industry, the investor industry is definitely dominated by men and because they're not uh, our user, they have a harder time understanding innately our product. So when I try to explain it to them, they might not get it right away and it takes a little bit more time. So that's probably been one of the disadvantages. Thank you. Our last question comes from T.A. Howard Middle School in Arlington, Texas. To what do you attribute your success today? Was it a skill, a class, a mentor, or a life experience, or all of the above? That's a great question. Um, I think it, it, it's actually a approach. You know, it's a way of doing things. Um, I think one of the things that's made me, um, that's helped me a lot is the the drive to go and try things, try and learn. Even if I'm not sure I'll succeed, I'm willing to kind of take a risk and I want to go for it because just this the understanding, I have this understanding um, that even if I don't succeed at what I try to do, at least I'll have learned something useful and then I can take that back with me and go do the next thing. Um, I realized how important this was probably in uh, in high school. Um, so a couple of examples, like th those are life experiences that sort of shaped me, but uh, then taught me this approach to life. Uh, so one example is um, my English teacher in high school. Uh, I wasn't in AP English or one of the honors English classes. I was just in regular English, and she came to me and she said, hey, you know what, you should just take the AP English exam, even though you haven't read any of the books, and you're not qualified really, to, or you're not like, you haven't fulfilled the prereqs, just take it. And I said, well, well why would I, why would I do that? Like, well, I mean, I probably wouldn't pass. And she's like, no, just go for it. It doesn't matter. Just go for it. So then I, I did, and I, I did really well on that exam. And I just realized that taught me, huh, maybe, maybe you should go for things, even if you're not, you know, got, if, even if you don't have the right prerequisites on paper, just go for it. Um, another example was uh, I ran for student council for class treasurer. And I didn't really think that I, it didn't seem like I would win because I wasn't, super popular, I was more quiet, more introverted, wasn't really very well known, but it turned out that all the other, I guess, quiet kids uh, and nerds like me voted for me, and then I realized that, hey, you can still be a leader, and I learned a lot from, from doing that and having to speak in front of, uh, in front of the class. Uh, so there was a lot of, those two things taught me that you should always take, sort of push yourself to take something more, do something more challenging, and then you'll definitely learn something from it. Um, and then when I got to uh, college and I was, I was looking for a job, I was interviewing and I met Marissa Mayer uh, during my interviews at Google. She was now, she's now the CEO of Yahoo, uh, but back then she was working at Google in, uh, as a director of product. And I met her during my interviews and she told me, I asked her for some advice and she basically said exactly that. She said, you should always take the more challenging path and go where you're going to, you're guaranteed to grow and learn even if you're not going to be successful. And that advice is what got me to, you know, join Polyvore when I felt like, oh, I've never done a startup before. How could I possibly do that? And then when the opportunity to become CEO came up, I thought, I mean, I've never done that before, but why not try it? And it's, you know, all those, some of the best decisions I've ever made have been when I just sort of went for it, even though I didn't feel like it was a guaranteed success. <laughs> yeah. And I have failed sometimes too, but even then you learn something that you take with you. Thanks, Jess. We actually have one more question. We had an eighth school um, that couldn't join us for tech difficulties, so I'm just going to ask their question. Sure. Um, if you were starting out today, what is one thing you would do differently in pursuit of your career goals? Um, you know what? I, I'm, I'm pretty. Ha I guess I'm pretty happy with how things turned out. I had a lot of angst around some of the decisions I made career-wise and. Um, some of the, the risks I took, and I didn't know at the time that those were good decisions. So maybe if I could go back and talk to my younger self, I would say, you know, go for it more. Like, don't don't be worried about the risk. Risk is good. Um, the other thing maybe I, I wish I'd done was I wish that I had learned a little bit more of some practical skills in college and high school, and specifically things like um, Photoshop, graphic design. Those things come in really, really handy later. Um, a lot of work requires or can be helped by having a good understanding of design. Um, I wish I had spent more time writing and then I actually wish I had spent more time programming at a younger age. I think the cool thing about computer science and about programming is um, it kind of teaches you this mentality or this approach where 
um, any big, hairy, complex problem that you have in life can be broken down and decomposed into smaller problems. And then those smaller problems can be broken into even smaller problems. And then you can tackle the small problems one at a time. And that makes the big, hairy problems seem less scary. And uh, that's one thing that's kind of the core principle underlying computer science. And the that, that approach, uh, I wish I'd learned that sooner. <laughs> Okay, so um, someone just wrote in and asked, what influenced your major decision in college? Um, so I, I, I wasn't sure what I wanted to major in, but I took a computer science class my uh, freshman year, and I just really, really liked it. Uh, I liked the, the whole, what I just talked about, about decomposing problems into smaller pieces, and then I loved that the output of my homework was basically a real product that someone else could play with, like sometimes it's a little game or a little email client, but just the idea that you could learn a skill that would enable you to build anything, like that that was so cool to me. Um, and I just really enjoyed it. So that, that's why, it's just because I took that first class. Great. Well, thank you so much, Jess, for joining us today. We appreciate you spending time answering questions and sharing more with us, yeah. inspiring more students to try computer science. So thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you for having me, guys. And thank you, Jen. Have a happy holiday. <laughs> and, and thank you so much, students, for joining us today. Um, we hope you had a great time sharing this video chat. So, round of applause, round of applause everyone. <laughs>